Good morning people, Titus here for another Unreal Engine tutorial, and in this video, I'll show you how to create realistic puppet movement for your player character. This effect can be achieved by using a function that simulates physics below a certain bone socket from your skeletal mesh. Let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Alright, uh, starting off, I'm going to create a quick folder. I'm going to call it Materials. And then uh, to demonstrate the effect we're going to be doing, let's go ahead and head into the characters folder. We'll choose mannequins, meshes, and then we have the SK underscore mannequin, which is the skeletal rig for both Manny and Quinn. So we'll open that up here. Uh, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see a list of all the different bone sockets. Basically what we're doing is we're, we're telling the engine to simulate physics uh, on the mesh um, at a certain bone level and below. Um, so basically if you've ever done, you know, if you ever set a mesh to simulate physics, you probably notice you get like a ragdoll effect where the body just basically collapses on the ground and, you know, kind of lands in funny positions and stuff. Um, what we can do though is we can actually keep some of the bones intact or not simulating physics. So they'll still like be up in the air. And then the, the bones below those levels will kind of like drop down and kind of look like a it kind of gives this puppet effect uh, and I'll kind of demonstrate that here in a second so uh, let's go ahead and jump back in and let's find our third person character under blueprints there's BP underscore third person let's open that up here and uh, to make this work uh, we have to add a um, just one component uh, the component is basically a physical animation and then you can rename it or lock it in there um, and then that's pretty much the the crux of the uh, of the setup really but uh, some other things we'll want to do is there are two different uh, collision items on this uh, this default pawn uh, one is the capsule component so if we search for collision you want to make sure it's set to pawn um, which it should be, uh, but in case it's not, make sure it's pawn. Uh, if you go to the mesh component, however, uh, that one needs to be set to ragdoll, and it probably isn't. So change that from whatever it is to ragdoll at the bottom here. And we can clear that here. Uh, and that's the majority of just the setup. So now we can actually go to the event graph and begin the code. Um, I think we're going to be triggering this on the event begin play. Um, but you could theoretically trigger it off a key press or a trigger or, you know, like a collision event, you know, however you want to do it, but just to make it simple here, uh, I'm going to drag in my physical animation reference. And then I'm also going to drag in my skeletal mesh because we'll need both of these. I can drag off either one and do a search for set skeletal mesh component. And then I can hook up this execution pin here and then the mesh of course is going to go in the bottom uh, section there for the component now the next thing we'll do is we'll drag off the physical animation again just because it's easier to search for nodes that way and then if you do apply physical animation settings and the one we want is the one that says below Click here and hook up those pins. I'm going to add a reroute node, drag it down, shift select my other node and press Q to line them up. Now for the, um, the body name, that's going to be the bone uh, type that we set. Um, because I need to do this reference twice, I'm just going to right click and just simply promote it to a variable. And I'm going to name this bone. And then you can see our variable is right here. And then last thing we need to do with this node is just drag off the physical animation data, run a search for make, and you'll get a reference for physical animation data. And you don't have to worry about changing anything with the orientation strength just yet. Uh, we're gonna leave the defaults. Uh, make sure the include self is checked on this one. Uh, just for now. 
And then on the mesh, we can drag off here and run a search for set all bodies below simulate physics. And then we'll hook up those pins here. Double click in the line to add a reroute node, drag it down. And then for the settings, I'm gonna tell it to do a new simulate and I am going to disable include self. And I'll talk about that in a second. Now, uh, looks like we got a compile error and that is because I have not hooked up the bone reference. So now if I double click, add a reroute node there, and just kind of make this a little bit neater. So this should be uh, kind of what you have set here. Now we haven't set the bone yet, so if we compile and save and try to play, nothing's gonna happen. Right, looks the same. Um, and that makes sense too. So we have to pick a actual bone slot. So we can come to our mannequin and uh, starting off, I'm gonna try the pelvis uh, just to demonstrate it. Whatever bone you choose though, um, case matters. So if it's uppercase, lowercase, what have you, make sure it matches the name exactly. So it's pelvis all lowercase. So we'll do right here, pelvis and compile. And now you'll notice that when we uh, hit play, Quinn is gonna look a little more relaxed than normal. And that's because the, um, the pelvis bone is still solid and rigid, but everything after it is uh, basically simulating the ragdoll physics. So you kind of get what is kind of like a puppet, but a very, very uh, loose puppet, I guess. Now there's three settings you can adjust. Well, there's actually more than that, but I find there's three main settings that you can adjust to change the uh, rigidity of your, your puppet animation. Uh, the orientation strength is a big one. So if we set this to like 100 and then compile and play, you can notice you get a little bit of walk animation now, not much, but it's there. Um, the other one is the physical animation component. You can actually select that. Increase the strength multiplier. Say you did something like 10, compile and save. And now you have a uh, much more rigid, where this is maybe the kind of the, at least in my opinion, this is kind of more puppety. Um, so if I was going, I'd probably go with something like this. And then the other one, of course, let's go ahead and switch these back. So we'll set this to one and we'll set this one to zero. Uh, the other one is the bone location. So simply changing which socket you decide to apply physics to will change your, your, your result quite a bit. Uh, so like if instead of the pelvis, uh, bone, maybe we do the spine number five. So we'll go select bone, change this to spine underscore zero five. And remember the orientation strength I set back to zero with no multiplier. So it should be very loose, but you'll notice it's actually very rigid. And you get some weird kind of banking with the, uh, the arms and the head and the neck. Um, and then you can change that too if you just move down the line, like say we went to three, compile and play. And you get a little bit uh, with the top of the uh, chest is kind of leaning now. So you can get one of these if that's what you're going for. Uh, good settings that I found. I actually do like to leave it on the uh, pelvis bone. And then I like to bump this to crazy high amount, a uh, thousand compile and save, and then I get the result that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, the reason you don't include the self bone, uh, if we compile and save, is because it's gonna tip over your rig. So you're gonna get one of these. And that's also why you don't include the root bone. Uh, so just as an example, if I go to this and I set this to spine zero three, I shouldn't tip over, even though I have include self on, right? So you get one of these. And that's because I need, like the pelvis is the first bone of the actual mesh, even though there is a root bone. The root bone isn't 
actually connected to the mesh, right? It's just a kind of like a, I guess, a placer. Um, typically, like when you're in Blender doing rigs, you'll have a root bone. You'll normally call it a control bone, and it's just an easier point to grab so you can move the entire mesh around. But it doesn't actually, you usually don't use it to like rotate. Um, but uh, essentially, if you were applying physics on every bone after the root bone, then this thing's just gonna fall to the ground, right? That's the same thing with the pelvis. If I tell it to apply physics to everything after the pelvis, including the pelvis, it's just gonna fall down. So you basically need, if you're gonna check that box, basically you need at least one of the bones um, not being uh, touched by the, the physics engine. Otherwise, it's just gonna tip over, so. Uh, but I'll set this back to pelvis. I will uncheck include self, compile and save. And make sure this still works. Yeah, it does. All right, perfect. All right, so now if I wanted to expand on this a bit, um, let's make it more of look like a puppet, I guess. Uh, puppets usually have a control paddle, so we can go add, we'll just add a cube. And then I guess I'll rename this control, and we'll just call it paddle. Why not? And then I can press R, go into scale, scale it down. I am going to turn off snapping and I'm looking to make just like a little wooden plank. Something like that maybe. Nothing too crazy. Press W so I go and transform or bring this up a bit. And I'm going to add a wood material. Maybe I'll do walnut worn. And it looks pretty good. Looks like a piece of wood. And then I can just right click on it, duplicate it, leave it as paddle one, but I will press E and rotate that 90 degrees. And now if I compile and save, I got the control paddle set up. So now we just need some strings. Um, and this is kind of the fun part. So what you can do for strings is, oops, um, we have a, uh, a cable option in Unreal Engine, but uh, the cable option allows you to attach to bone sockets, which is really helpful. But I can't nest it in the, uh, the main component tree. I have to nest it underneath the skeletal mesh uh, to be able to make use of the actual parent sockets. Otherwise, it won't work. So make sure your skeletal mesh, um, you know, you may not be using the same one as me, but whatever you're using, choose that. And then hit add and search for cable and you'll see an option for a cable. I'm gonna pick that and I'm gonna call this um, string underscore H for head. And then for the parent socket, if I hit the folder, I have access to my skeleton. So I can search for the head. Goes in there, looks pretty good. The width is a little bit thick, so I'll go back to cable width, change it from 10 to a one, so it looks more stringy. And then there is a uh, cable start and cable end uh, place here. If you expand this out, it'll actually let you select a component uh, on the endpoint. Uh, so I can just simply search uh, paddle and you'll notice it attaches to the paddle. Uh, it's offset, that's because in the end location there is a 100 offset in the, I assume that's the X. Um, Although it looks like the Y, so I don't know why it's like that. But anyways, if I zero that out, it'll go center. Um, I kind of want it further back though. I want it uh, attached to the back of the panel. So maybe I'll do negative 100, maybe negative 50, negative 40. And I think that looks pretty good on the top. Uh, the bottom part of it is a bit off though. I kind of want it at the top of the head. So for the location, uh, that looks like the, normally world transform would be blue, it'd be the Z, but this is uh, local transform. Uh, so red is up. So I'm gonna try maybe 20, oh, maybe 13. 
How does that look? Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so now if I compile and save this, I have a string. I got one string attached, but that is very much the effect I am looking for. So let's continue that and we'll create some more here. So I'm gonna right click, duplicate, and I'm going to change this to um, maybe left arm. It's probably not a good naming convention, but I'm going with it. And I'm gonna do lower arm left. And I'm gonna zero this out. And then I need to go, what, 40, no, negative 200. Yeah, maybe negative 150. That looks good. And that is attached on the lower arm. I could also do the hand. The hand would probably be a better spot, but I'm gonna go with that for now. Um, I don't need this offset anymore. This was for the head, so I'm gonna zero that out. And yeah, I think I'm happy with that. So we will right click and duplicate that. And now we're gonna change this to right arm. And what's nice about this is um, we'll go ahead and socket this to uh, lower arm right. And the, uh, the value, whatever you set for your value or whatever you're happy with, just change it to the, uh, um, the inverse. So this was negative 150, so I'll do 150. And it should line up just right for you. And then I'm gonna try attaching some strings to either the knees or the feet. Uh, maybe for this time I'll do the feet. And I'm gonna put them, should I do it further out? Yeah, I guess I'll do it further out. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate. And then we'll do LF for left foot. And then the bone, I can search for foot. We got foot R and foot L. Uh, this one is left. All right, so I want that to be Yeah, why not? Um, I feel like I don't have anything in the front. I'm gonna move that one in the, maybe I'll make them both in the front. I should probably look at a reference so I have a better idea. But let's do this over there and let's go 50, 40. All right, and then we can duplicate that one. And then this one will be the right foot. Now, where to put it though, maybe do 20. Oh, that cuts in the chest a little bit, so. That's probably gonna look a little weird, but. Let's see what it looks like. So we'll hit play. Yeah, I think there's too many strings on the front. So I think I will place those on the side. So I'm gonna zero that out. And then let's try 20. What was the... Uh, let's do 100. Yeah, I think that looks okay. And then for this one, I'm gonna go a little bit further out. So maybe I'll do 180. And this will be negative 180. And then this one is negative 100, was it? Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Compile, save. Yeah, that looks a little bit better, I think. And then what you could do if, um, if you wanted to extenuate uh, or accent the strings a little bit, um, come to our materials folder, right click, create a material, M underscore E base, create an emission base, double click, switch the blend mode to translucent, click three and, or hold three and click in the graph, 
gives you a vector three constant. Hold S, click on the graph, gives you a scalar parameter. Call this one brightness, set it to 100. Uh, right click on this, convert to a parameter, we'll call it color. And then we'll hold M, click on the graph, gives us a multiply node. Hook these two pins up here. Hook this into the emissive color and save. You're good with that. Then you can right click on the eBase, create a material instance. We'll do MI underscore red. Right click, material instance, MI underscore white. Right click, material instance, MI underscore maybe blue. And then it's just as simple as check in a box. This one was blue. Maybe I'll do that type of blue. This one was red. We'll do that as a red. And then a white. Bump that up there, click OK, save. And then we can go back to our strings. You just select one, shift select the bottom one, highlights them all under materials, click that, mi underscore, maybe try white starting off. And then you got a different effect on your strings here. And then another thing you can do is we can mess with the lighting in your scene. Select the directional light, click into Pi, Control Alt L, drag the sun down a bit. So you get a little ambiance. Go to your environmental light mixture, scroll down. You can bump the fog density to a 0.5. And then volumetric fog. Actually, let's try it without it. Let's see what this looks like. You get this sort of look. I think I like the volumetric fog a little better. So let's check that. Yeah, I think this fog just works better. And you have some horror show of this going on. Maybe you're making a horror game. Uh, let's try mi underscore blue. Compile, play. Kind of looks like the white. Probably should have used the darker shade of blue. Well, it looks pretty good for the movement. And what's nice about this too is you you know you um, you don't have to do a whole lot of animation data. It just kind of lets the physics engine get your setup here, so it's very easy to to implement. Uh, we can try a red compile save, and there's the red. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, people, we'll cut it here. I was trying to keep this video short, but I think it got a little bit long, but uh, I hope you found the information um, informative. Maybe you can take it uh, into your own projects, but as always, thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you on the next one.